Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Let's talk about steampunk. While it remains a popular subgenre of fantasy, I think a lot of people misunderstand it due to either faulty information or outright cynicism. I could go on about the themes of Victorian-themed SF, the post-enlightenment societies therein, but that'd be seeing the forest for the trees. Much like cyberpunk, what's often overlooked about the genre is the punk part of it. The sense of independence and nonconformity that comes within its cast of characters is as important as the gears and top hats, if not more so. This brings us to Tefra, a steampunk pulp adventure mixed with elements of high fantasy, along with its associated clockwork system. How does it hold up? Well, let's find out. At about 288 pages, Tefra is a fairly light read. While it's not exactly reaching levels of self-awareness, there is a degree of levity in the writing here. Going into full detail on the core mechanic and the character creation early is a bit odd, but that might be my own experience talking. Even so, there's little in the way of obscure parts in the text. On the downside, no index. For shame. Tefra is a semi-free form affair with its character creation, with an emphasis on customization. This will be reflected with Alexei von Tarsis, a veteran of the Civil War who turned to the private sector after it ended. The first step is race and nationality. The former ties into several racial traits to choose from, while the latter grants a related background story. In Alexei's case, we'll go with human and evangelician. This grants the speed trait, two trait picks, and a random trait. For the former two, we'll go with innovative and relentless. And for the latter random trait, we roll a d12 to pick the appropriate trait. Since we rolled an 11, we gain the reactionary one. The second step is skills and attributes. Instead of having a set number of skill points, you have several slots. Simply put, you have three points in one skill, two points in two skills, and one point in three skills. After these are allocated, the skills are added together with their associated attributes. In Alexei's case, we'll go with three in swashbuckling, two in agility, two in automata, one in tactical, one in luck, and one in resilience. This makes his attributes to be brute one, cunning one, science two, dexterity five, and spirit one. Fourth is specialties which is equal parts class and feat in a sense. Each specialty grants a specific ability as well as passive bonuses. At the first level, we can pick from three specialties, in which case we'll go with Fight Anywhere, Efficient Strike, and Prosthetician. Fifth is Augments, if any. This determines what sort of upgrades you can apply to your crafting skills. Since Alexei has an Augment rating of four, two from Race and two from Specialty, he'll be using all four on Prosthetic Augments, going for Precision, Reinforced, Extendable Hand, and Air Blaster. Sixth is Weapons and Armors. There's no real limit here, but it's typically advised to put in two weapons and one armor and a deflection item. In this case, we'll go with Rapier, Alexei's Prosthetic Hand, Light Armor, and a Cloak. Finally, Gear and Money. There's no set amount of spending money for starting equipment, merely a set of suggested equipment and then having ten princes as pocket money. In this case, we'll be going with a set of middle-class clothing, a grappling hook, a journal, an ink pen, a spyglass, and three days of rations. I see a lot of potential for ideas in this creation method. My only real issue is how divorced attributes are from derived stats. On one hand, I like the emphasis on skills removing the junk skill problem that can happen, but it comes dangerously close to Roland Keep's problem of valuing one setup over another. That aside, I do think it's a net positive that matches the customization that it wants to shoot for. It just could use a little more unification. Tefra uses the clockwork system, which is rooted in a d12 roll plus modifiers. Instead of having a set difficulty class, you have a set of tiers of success. These tiers range from 1 to 4, and natural 12s explode while a natural 1 just results in a result of 1. What makes it interesting in this case is that most rolls in combat are contested rolls, though it could be argued that rolling twice for each attack is a bit sluggish. Speaking of combat, actions therein use an action economy due to each one costing a certain number of action points. I think the only problem I have with the clockwork system, apart from the divorced nature I mentioned before, is the lack of a true failure state. Even a roll of one is still counted as a minor success. I know that I've defended failing forward in the past, but I feel there's a lack of real consequence in this setup. Yes, it could end up as less than one with a contested roll, but that still feels like a bandage to the issue. 
Tefra is a classic case of the devil is in the details. I adore the leveling and skill system here, and the combat and crafting setups are the right kind of detailed. However, it does have an issue of explaining itself at times. Several instances I felt like there were mechanics where I got the gist of, but should have had a section explaining its importance beforehand. That's not to say it's badly written, it's just something that could use a little more organization. With that in mind, I would give Tefra a stamp of recommended. While there's a few odd ticks, the core of it is brimming with potential for expansion. It's still a very customizable affair that's in the middle ground between freeform and class-based. It's just going to be one of those where you'll have a few add-on notes when running. But who runs games as written anyway? That'd likely go against the punk part of steampunk. Stay frosty, everybody!